Nursing Today. Before you can learn how to be a nurse, you need to learn what being a nurse is all about and what it comprises. In other words, the basics of nursing. We start off with the client being the center of the nurse's care, and this includes not only the client, but also the family, significant other, and the community. Our profession is guided by a code of ethics that incorporates the American Nurses Association standards, evidence-based practice, and critical thinking skills. But before we get into the basics of nursing, we have to know where we came from. We pick up with Florence Nightingale, although nursing was around long before she was. She was a daughter of a wealthy English couple that, much to their dismay, had a calling to be a nurse. And she finally convinced them to let her go into nurses training. She was the first practicing nurse epidemiologist. She volunteered during the Crimean War in 1853. She was cleaning up wards, improving ventilation, sanitation, and nutrition. And by doing this, she improved the mortality rate in Barracks Hospital in Turkey from 2.2% or from 42.7% down to 2.2% within a 6-month time frame. She developed the first organized program for training nurses at St. Thomas Hospital. Her curriculum was based on the following beliefs. That nutrition is important uh, to the nursing care. Fresh, clean air is beneficial to the sick. Nurses should identify and meet clients' needs. Nursing should be directed toward health and illness. Nursing is distinct and separate from medicine and should be taught by nurses. Nurses need continuing education. In moving on up to Civil War nursing, there were three women who were very influential during the Civil War. We have Clara Barton, who was the founder of the American Red Cross. She led volunteers into field hospitals to care for soldiers of both the North and the South. And Dorothea Dix was the appointed superintendent of Union Army female nurses. And Mary Ann Ball, or Mother Bickerdyke, organized ambulance services. And here's some pictures of some historical Red Cross ambulance and workers. Moving up to nursing in America to the 20th century, we have these ladies. And Lillian Wall and Marion Brewster opened up the Henry Street Settlement in 1893. They focused on the needs of the poor for the first time. In the 20th century, we have Mary Adele Nutting, who was the first professor of nursing back in 1906. Nursing continues to evolve to this day. You are never going to learn all there is to know about nursing in nursing school. Nursing is an ever-changing profession. By the time you graduate, there's already going to be changes in progress. Several different things have an influence on nursing and how nursing is performed. We start off looking at health care reform that affects payment and delivery of health care. Demographic changes with the expanding and aging populations. We have an increase in chronic and long-term illnesses. The medically underserved are poor and on Medicaid or maybe they're the working poor that have jobs, but they just don't make enough money to pay insurance. Or clients that require home-based palliative care. We have to work underneath bioterrorism threats. There are a lot of educational programs that help prepare for nuclear, chemical, or biological attacks. Health care costs continue to rise and nurses are expected to provide quality care in the most economical manner possible. And the nursing shortage. There is a global shortage. The baby boomers are coming of age and they're going to require a lot more nursing care. Nurses must learn to work efficiently, proficiently and professionally. Time management skills are a necessity. 
as a profession, we are going to, uh, or we are held to different standards. We are held to higher standards of conduct on the job and outside the job. If you think back to your application to nursing school, you had a background check. And this will also happen with licensure. You must notify the School of Nursing and the Kansas State Board of Nursing of any crimes in your past other than a minor traffic violation. So in other words, if you have a reputation for being wild and crazy, being a partier, etc., you need to begin changing behaviors now or possibly consider another profession. The practical nurse fills many roles. To understand those roles, first of all, we have to look at the scope of practice for the LPN, and that can be found in each individual state's Nurse Practice Act. We can be caregivers. In other words, implement interventions to improve, maintain, or restore health. Advocates, where we protect human and legal rights of clients. Educators, where we teach and counsel to promote wellness or prevent illness. Collaborators, we work with RNs and other members of the healthcare team pro to provide continuity of care. And managers, we assign minor tasks to nurse assistants or other ancillary personnel. The nursing process helps identify basic client needs and then helps the nurse develop an organized, deliberate, systematic way to deliver nursing care. It helps provide a way to implement care by combining the science and the art of nursing and focusing the nurse on the client as an individual. We need to start off by looking at the WATC nursing program mission. We provide quality technical and academic education that leads to immediate entry-level employment as an LPN and or further education that positively impacts the economic development of the healthcare community. The WATC nursing program philosophy is a lifelong pursuit of knowledge a commitment to the achievement of potential, self-acceptance, and respect for self, respect and concern for others and their rights, and social and civic responsibility. Now each facility is going to have its own policies and procedures. They provide guidelines for the performance of procedures, and these are rules and guidelines that may be specific to a facility. Standards of practice describe competent level of nursing care, whereas standards of professional performance describe a competent level of behavior in the professional role. We all follow a code of ethics, which is a philosophical ideal of right and wrong when caring for clients. If you look under uh, the National Association of Practical Nurse Education and Service, or NAPNES, there is a code of ethics for LPNs. And then we look, look at Nurse Practice Acts. These are established in each United State and Canadian province, and they often vary from state to state. They regulate the practice of nursing and are designed to protect the public and define the legal scope of practice for the nurses. It lays down rules and regulations for level of nursing education and licensure requirements. I highly recommend you look at the Kansas Nurse Practice Act. Even as a student, you're responsible for knowing or being familiar with the information. And you can find that under ksbn.org. It's also under your resources. And look at the LPN scope of practice under NFLPN org slash practice hyphen standards. So practical nurses find their education in vocational or technical schools, hospitals, proprietary schools, and community colleges. Completion of these programs will qualify the student to take the NCLEX PN examination. 
For the registered nurse, these are graduates of hospital-based diploma programs, two-year associate degree programs, or four-year baccalaureate nursing programs. Completion of these programs successfully will qualify the student to take the NCLEX RN examination. The ADN program focuses on basic sciences, theoretical, and clinical courses. The BSN focuses on those three areas in addition to social sciences, arts and humanities that support nursing theory. Graduate programs for master's and doctorate degrees uh, in nursing are available at most of your universities. These nurses are prepared as specialists in various clinical branches of nursing in research or in administration. With a master's degree, these nurses have strong skills in nursing science and theory with an emphasis on basic sciences and research-based clinical practice. The nurse practitioner programs, these are RNs that have training in a specialty with expanded knowledge through the formulation and interpretations of evidence-based practice and nurse practitioners are the most independently functioning nurse out there. All nurses must, must be licensed and the exam is identical from state to state. Successful completion of the NCLEX exam shows a standardized minimal nursing knowledge base. Once you're licensed, you can also be certified, which is an additional education in a specialty area. Following attainment of licensure and or certification, there's always going to be in-service training, which is instruction or a training program that's provided by a healthcare agency or institution and continuing education, which is formal, organized educational programs that are required to maintain licensure and or certification. There is a number of career opportunities for nurses out there. You can be a nurse practitioner, a nurse researcher, a nurse risk manager, a quality improvement nurse, a consultant, a business owner, a nurse educator, a nurse administrator, a staff nurse. The, it, the list goes on and on. There's a lot of professional organizations that deal with issues of concern. They set standards for the profession that are the same across the nation and globa globally, and a lot of these organizations might focus on specialty areas. They closely monitor current research. They're active in politics to improve the profession. They present educational programs and publish journals. Some of these organizations are the National League for Nursing, which sets standards for excellence and innovation in education. The American Nurses Association, which improves standards of health and availability of health care. And the International Council of Nursing, which has objectives that are very parallel to the ANA. Current philosophies in nursing are that we treat the whole person and we do this all the while providing patient safety.